Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Highland Summit Signature Event, checking in 4478U underscore. It's had a really great performance so far as we're filming this. This is their first event of the year as well, too. But you got to take a look at what their robot and what they are showcasing here at this event. A lot of great design that goes into this. We'll be talking about some of that design process that they've gone into. And just overall, the way that they're scoring has been very quick very efficient, so I can definitely appreciate that as well. Has some cool sensors on the robot we'll be talking about, as well as some of their design philosophies, match strategies, and more. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parks. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Great, so let's talk about some of your design of your robot overall. Like I said, I've been very impressed with it. I see the flex wheels on your robot, a little bit different than some other teams as well too. So let's talk about that intake as we kind of move through that ring journey in your robot. Yeah, so um, we decided on the flex wheel intake because we realized that with the hook intake design, um, we were seeing a lot of teams that were implementing that and it seemed a bit slower because as the hooks came around, uh, they had to the rings had to have a waiting period before it got hooked and brought up. With the flex wheel intake, it's a very smooth transition uh, from the base intake up to the top, which puts it onto the stake. Um, and but there are a couple issues that we've had with this design. So we've had to put a, a chain tensioner, tensioner on right here because we have a floating intake so that we can rise above the ring and account for the size of it. Um, so this chain tensioner makes sure that our chain stays tight with this rubber band right here. Uh, we have a high strength axle to keep it sturdy. And then we also have these laser cut brackets right here that hold in ball bearings. And so this is a this is a really good design because it keeps everything running smoothly because as you can see, there's a lot of levels to this. There's a lot of different uh, axles that are running on the same motor. So with the ball bearings, uh, it just allows everything to run smoothly with the lowest wattage possible on that motor because we want to put no stress on it at all. And then another big issue we've had is with the floating intake, this chain can rise up a lot. And so we have these also laser cut uh, circles that are next to each of our sprockets down here so that our chain doesn't slip off. It just keeps it uh, where it's supposed to be so that we don't go out of commission at any point during the match. Very smooth process for that so far. Um, something I want to ask you is you said you started designing back in like July time. So we had a big rules update come out uh, recently as well too. Did that change at all kind of how your robot was designed? Uh, no, luckily we were, we were a little bit worried about that uh, with the game manual update. But um, we read over it and nothing changed that uh, impacted us in like any big ways. There were a couple things with sizing that we had to figure out um, after that rule change. But other than that, we haven't really had any issues with that. What are some other mechanical features you want to highlight on your robot? Uh, so another big thing that we have is the lift. So if you could lift it up. So our lift runs on one motor. Uh, it's right over here. We were thinking about doing a four bar, but we decided to go with this design because it's a lot more uh, compact and lower weight. Uh, the four bar tends to be really bulky and it takes up a lot of space on the robot, but since this is such a small mechanism, um, we wanted it to stay as small as possible. So we cut these gears in half. These are 60 tooth gears. Uh, and then we attach it to this piece of one by L and then it's screw, it's screw jointed onto this standoff that runs right here all the way up. And then we flip to the other side uh, this is the motor for it, so the ratio is 12 to 60, and this is what brings it up. It's on another ball bearing, which is also on a laser printed bracket, um, and yeah, it's it's banded up a lot just to support the weight of it, and this is just so that we can get uh, aligned stakes and sometimes neutral stakes. Uh, you're also doing a, a climb too that I saw as well too in your previous matches, right? Yeah, so this also helps us get our climb. Um, we actually we weren't gonna implement climb. But with this design, it was it was it just meshed so well into it that we decided to um, put it on. So we have a passive climb. It goes right under this gear right here, and the bar sits right in this nook. And all we have to do, just since our wheels aren't all the way at the back of our robot down here, uh, this axle digs into the ground as soon as we go up. So luckily, our lift is strong enough so that we can just scrunch up a bit, and it takes that corner out of the ground. Um, and makes us hanging, and then even when the match powers down and the bot sinks, it's still not touching and it's still elevated. 
Let's pass over to Allison. I'd like to hear a little bit more about some of your mat strategies that you've gone through uh, and then kind of how that incorporates with what your current robot is. Yeah, so one of the major things we focus on is right after the Auton ends, we um, open our clamp and then we go straight into a mobile goal so that hopefully it grabs, grabs, grasps the end of the mobile goal and then we can start um, adding the rings onto it. Um, depending on what our strategy is, what our alliance is, sometimes we might choose to just stack the rings on top of it and then drop the mobile goal and keep doing that for other mobile goals. Or another strategy we have to focus on is um, we just can't, we fill the mobile goal up with rings and then put it into the positive corner and then just camp there until the last 15 seconds where then we leave um, the protected zone and then start to hang. So looking looking at the future of this game, the, this game consistently evolves, right? We've seen wall stakes become more of an important thing uh, in this year's game. Do you think that might uh, impact some of your design in the future as well? Yeah, so right now, um, in order to get our, our ring onto the Alliance stick, it's a little bit tricky because we have to angle it at the right spot and then outtake and then move the lift down. So it's kind of a hard thing, especially when we're being played hard defense on. So then we might... Um, might change a robot to do is have an easier way to put it on so in case someone does happen to play defense on us it doesn't totally distract us from what we're doing and then mess up that entire strategy in itself. Well let's wrap up on this robot talk about uh, some of the sensors that you're implementing as well too and when we talked earlier you got a couple great autonomous modes you want to talk about also. Yeah so so our robot has two main sensors right so we have the inertial sensor that's important for turn oh that's important for like turn PIDs when we need to make sure our robot is at the rotation it needs to be, right? And then we have this limit switch we use over here, which checks, uh, and the limit switch checks of like this uh, thing is, is fully off or not, right? And so we make sure that the motor doesn't try to stress itself out by going further than it's intended to. And then for you, any uh, changes maybe you're looking at implementing for your next events as well too? Oh yeah, so right now we have like, uh, on our near side Auton, right? We have uh, uh, um, Auton, I guess, one mobile goal and two rings. Right now, we're trying to develop that to s solo AWP so that you know, we can get more points and more win points. Yeah, AWP has been a very tough thing this year, I think, compared to the last year as well, too. So can't wait to see how this team does. This is Underscore, by the way. Uh, congratulations on your success so far, but we can't wait to see how you do. Definitely playoff bound, but I think the question is maybe how far in the playoffs, so we can't wait to see where that goes as well. So good luck here. Thanks for giving us a breakdown of your robot. Can't wait to see how you do the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.